Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Event Leviathan, issue number three. Didn't like this book at all. There was not a single thing inside this comic book that I liked. But since I bought it, since I read it, I'm going to review it. And first I'm going to tell you about who made the book. Um, I shouldn't say there's nothing I liked about it. I can say this. I think that all this incredible art was kind of wasted on the writing of this book. Let's just put it that way. Just so we can really isolate where I believe the problem is. Okay, let's get going. The story is written by Brian Michael Bendis. Alex Maliev is on art, Josh Reed doing the letters, and um, Jay Ansoletto and Rain Barreto doing the variant cover. Um, dude, so apparently the Red Hood is so badass, he's suddenly become one of the best fighters in the DC Universe. Look, I can see putting him in the top 100 list. Maybe even the top 50 list. I mean, he's a badass mamma jamma, you know what I'm saying? Like, of the main characters that we're going to put out there. We're not going to put him in front of any of the Themyscarians, right? But, um, like, you get what I'm saying in general. Yeah, he's, he's badass. Is he badass? Uh, he's, we, we didn't, we've already seen he's badass enough to beat off, uh, uh, beat off on, oh, that sounds bad, to put a beat down on um, Robin, right? Damien. We've seen him be able to do that before. But can he beat up on Damien and Green Arrow and Vic Sage and the new Manhunter and Batman all at the same time? Is he that badass? When did Lois Lane learn how to teleport from a roof to the ground floor of people who couldn't even get down there fast enough? When exactly? that happen. When are all these characters so dumb that they're going to disbelieve a guy like Red? I mean, I get that Red Hood is what it, it just doesn't make sense, man. Look, the, like Red Hood is able to beat up all these guys twice and get away twice and be able to have a five minute minimum conversation, minimum five minute conversation with Lois Lane, who recently learned how to teleport. Superman shows up, Jerry Siegel, um, Joe Schuster, and um, she, he's going to save Amanda Waller from Leviathan. Meanwhile, everybody in Leviathan, well, enough people in Leviathan have said, we're not your enemy, Superman. I think that you'll see when this is over that we're actually trying to help. Um, and yet we all know who Amanda Waller is. Look, I, you know what? I'm going to make a little proposition here. Why doesn't DC, Dan, Daddy, or whomever, just make a, a Bendis verse comic book, even a little omnibus comic book, and just, look, give him whatever artists he wants. It's, it's Brian Michael Bendis. He deserves it, right? Bendis is coming. Bendis is here. Maybe Bendis has to go. Give him an omnibus. Let him devote however many pages he wants to every single character in the DC universe so that he could, because let's face it, let, let's face it, all that I'm seeing out of this is that Bendis wants to put his Bendis print on every single hero in the comic book universe at some point or another. It's like he's got a little checklist and just, oh, I'm ready, this guy and this guy and this one, all these people. Just give him a book so we can do that so that Mr. Bendis could say, you know, the big smile that he does. Uh, and then he could just go do his creator own characters, which I usually like a lot. But Bendis doesn't know how to play in the sandbox. Um, when he breaks, the, there were lots of people who break roles and they still come out amazing. Walter Simonson is a person who's shown, who's demonstrably been able to consistently change a character forever. And we all just sit back in awe and go, wow. <laughs> Bendis is somebody who does it and goes, and I feel that most of us are just like, oh, okay. So I'm done. I'm done. I'm 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 done with um, seeing Mr. Bendis, his character. Like none of no, nothing that happens in this comic book makes any sense. Nothing. 
nothing. So yeah, I like it's this issue is to me so bad that I forgot how much I liked the second issue. Amanda Waller, who makes a device out of parts lying around in the extremely alien Fortress of Solitude, which is brand new. Maybe she had some parts stuffed and hidden in various orifices in her body to make a device that can monitor everybody there and yet nobody can detect, including Batman, can detect the device there. I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Professor Bell, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.